eh afema wamu eh na Jeremiah ina holo kadri no ya kereza uchi blog sport ki bamme uh today is a uh, super saturday where we will be discussing with our guest uh sa uh mahmoud uh hello sir yes sir. hi kadri hello good afternoon from here yeah it's morning yeah the time right now it's uh it's 31 a.m. in the morning. Hello. So how are you? I think we're having uh, a little each here. I can hear you clearly. Yeah, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. It's very clear, yeah. Okay, you can hear me loud and clear. All right, welcome to oh, Ochi Blog Spot. Yeah. Uh, it's a super Saturday where we shall be discussing. Okay, okay. I think we're still having a little challenge with the connection. Let me try and reload. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, welcome back yeah hello sir how are you i can hear you can you hear me clearly yes i can hear you loud and clear good afternoon and welcome to our chief blog sport nice talking to you thank you very much also thank you for giving me this opportunity too okay uh, today we are looking at coronavirus Yeah, uh, today we are looking at uh, the coronavirus pandemic, uh, how our people have uh, been uh, seeing the whole issue as a political whatever, bruhaha. And uh, we actually invited you on the program today to give us an insight onto the reality of COVID-19 over there. I understand that you live in uh, uh, Houston, Texas, and uh, you have a first hand information as to the reality on ground what is happening in the world today so and that is why we have you here on board we'd like you to uh, do a brief introduction of yourself so that our people can get to know you better and uh, feel at home with you yes uh can you hear me now can you hear me Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. My name, my name is Amino Mahmoud. Uh, most of my friends, they do call me Sufu. Sufu is my first name, but uh, I lost my dad when I was four years old. So just to keep his name, I had to take Sufu as my middle name, then uh, used Amino as my first name. Uh, I'm from, uh, right. I'm from uh, Isako West local government. Uh, in a dual state. Uh, my dad is from South Ibia, and uh, my mom, she's okay. from Malawi, uh, from Jetu. So I grew up uh, within the oh. Ibia environment, between, with, between Auchi, when I was growing up, I grew up in Auchi, I also grew up in Jetu, then I grew up in South Ibia. South Ibia. And in South Ibia, I'm from mm -hmm. uh, Iyapi. Uh, I was born in Wari, and uh, my dad was transferred to Calabar. I lost my dad when I was four in Calabar, so we had to relocate back home. So most of my childhood was in between uh, Wari and uh, Isako West. Uh, been, I've been in the United States right now for November 16. This year it's going to make it 16 years I've been in the United States. I came in uh, 2005, uh, November 16. Uh, uh, wow. I'm married. 16, 16, I'm married. Years. 16 years now. I came here when I was 24. So right now I'm 40 years old. 
So wow. <laughs> imagine mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 24 coming to a strange land without a father, mother, sister, brother. It was tough. Yeah. But uh, I understand one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you don't have your, your family with you, your friends become your family. So at first, my friends were my family. Then I started uh, when I had a relationship with my wife and I got married. So I started having my own family. That's true. Very true. For the medical field, I've been into the medical field for over 15 years now. Because as soon as I came to the United States, I started with the medical field. I was introduced to it by my uh, uncle I lived with. Uh, I started as a nursing yeah. assistant. I started as a nursing assistant. While I was working as a nursing assistant, that was where I met my wife. And uh, my wife, too, was also an encouragement for me to go to school to become a nurse. Uh, from uh, nursing assistant, went to school. I became a licensed practical nurse. After one year working as a licensed practical nurse, I went straight to uh, for my registered nursing program. After the nursing program, I did my bachelor's. Uh, just this year, I applied for master's stroke doctorate program, which I'm going to start by uh, August. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, due to what's going on right now, we're not even sure if we're going to start the program August uh, because the school, I'm still waiting for response from them. Um, apart from that, there's nothing much about me. Uh, my my story is everything about me. It's on Facebook. Everything I see on Facebook is everything about me. It's, it's not different. Can you hear me? All right. Um... Yes, I can hear you. It's really nice getting to hear and actually see you live mm -hmm. today. You know, I've been following up, following up with you uh, ever since, especially when you took your mother uh, on a tour around the world. It was quite uh, uh, exciting. Yeah, uh, it's a nice that was, one. That was, that was you've really been able to, you know, marry that family. Time, that was really <laughs> an exaggeration. Two thousand and fifteen. Uh, Wow. My mom was rushed. My mom was rushed to uh, the hospital. Then my mom was leaving my sister in Bode, so she wasn't feeling fine. Okay. It's been a concern for me uh, ever since I came to United States. My one of my achievement or one of my goal was to be able to bring my mom here because I'm the last child, which I didn't say. I'm the last child. Was seven of us, two uh, three boys and four girls. So I grew. I grew up partly with my sister, but. I never joke with my mom. So 2015, when they called me, my mom mm -hmm. was sick. I've already applied for an immigrant visa for her. So luckily, during the process and all that, I got an, a message and said that she's been uh, processed, that I have to bring her for an interview. That was the reason I came over to Nigeria, because she can't work then. She was on a wheelchair. So I had to struggle out to the embassy. Luckily, they gave her a visa. So exaggerations that I'm taking my mom talking around the world. It was just <laughs> between Nigeria, Holland, which I transited, and then to the United States. Uh, she's been doing all right. When she came, it was difficult at, at the beginning, caring for an aged parent that can work, mm -hmm. not to work with the aid of a worker. Uh, it was difficult at the beginning, but luckily I have... <laughs> A beautiful wife. I used to connect it. A very caring wife that really was a was a backbone of everything. All right. So um, let's get straight to uh, today's business. Uh, tell us about coronavirus. Oh, oh, we had, which is the main topic for today. Uh, coronavirus. Before I start, which is called yes. COVID nineteen. COVID-19 was the name picked by uh, WHO World Health Organization. Uh, coronavirus itself is just uh, the infection, the, okay. the disease itself, it's called coronavirus. But before you understand the, the disease itself, you have to understand what causes the disease. The main cause of the disease, which is uh, it's called SARS-CoV-2, SARS -CoV it's part of the coronavirus family. Okay. Coronavirus itself okay. is a large family. Under it, you have what they call SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID. Okay. COVID is an infectious disease uh, that can be transmitted through uh, droplets, through airborne droplets. When I mean, I'll try as much as possible to 
bring down my medical term. When I mean droplets. So break it so down a little so we can understand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll try to try to bring it down at at some some sometime. I'll try to use my pidgin English too to make it easy for our people to understand back home. Uh, when I say yeah, you can mix it. Yeah, <laughs> when I say when I say uh, uh, airborne droplet, I mean you have uh, as soon as you get it, when you cough, when you sneeze, you can easily transmit it. When I mean, it doesn't mean you just have to inhale it. Maybe you cough and yeah. it fell on the table or anywhere somebody touched it and put his hand in his mouth or his nose or eyes. You can easily get it through that process. You know, yeah. another thing is that uh, we have to talk about the pathogenesis. Uh, everything how it started, it all started December last year. I was reading the news when I saw it that it started in China, one in China. I called my wife. I said, this thing is going to be tough when it gets here. It's, it's, this is going to shake the world. Mm. At first, she never, she never believed me because the first thing I do every morning is when I log into my laptop, I have to read the news. So as soon as I started monitoring it, I read everything about it. The way it was spreading, I said, this is going to start. That, that was when I started trying to stuff our own, trying to get water. Because uh, in my house, I have my mom with me, I have my father-in-law, I have my mother-in-law. And these people, are they are both 60 years old. So, you know. So along the line, I started going on, started going on, started going on. Then uh, the next thing, uh, we had the first case in uh, United States of America. At the beginning, uh, you know, the kind of president we had, it just, said it's in, it's normal it's just a normal flu like symptoms cold that will come and go mi miraculously but uh, when i read the news when i saw that i knew it was just lies as soon as it started spreading we started seeing the effects of it you know so uh so far the damage he has done it's something you can't uh something we never imagine we never imagined, but as we go along, I will tell you much about it. The COVID itself, the COVID itself, when it gets into your system, as soon as you inhale it or through, it's a virus, normally a virus, it's something that can't, it can't live outside the host cell for a long time. So it needs something, it needs a human cell or it needs an animal to live in. So as soon as it goes into your system, the first place it hits is your lungs. As soon as it goes into your lungs, now what does it want to do? The first thing it does is to replicate your system. When I mean replicate, it wants to bring himself, it wants to reproduce himself more into in your system. So what it does is that within the virus, the outer part of the virus, there's what they call protein spike. That protein spike, it, as soon as possible, it triggers your immune, your your receptor uh, molecules in front, outside your cells. As soon as it transfers uh, is a uh, genetic material into you, it tells your cell to reproduce it more. So now your cell is now reprodu reproducing more COVID, more of the virus. That is when your, the virus takes over your system. Hello, are you there? Hello? Kadiri, are you there? I can't hear you anymore. Hello, I, I'm here, I'm here. I can hear you. The people can hear you. Yeah, because I saw, I, I didn't see you anymore, so I was just wondering. So, as soon as the team take over yeah, I just wanted to expand the screen so that people can actually get the feel of what happened. Hmm. As soon as the star is coming, I'm coming. coming. Gets your Give me a little while. That's when you get your first sign and symptoms. The major sign and symptoms we see most times is uh, dry cough, fever. Most times when they say fever, your temperature goes above 100, 100, 100 .3, and uh, you get tiredness. But recently we started seeing people developing uh, symptoms like uh, diarrhea, the loss uh, taste and the loss smell. And uh, recently, we started seeing kids developing what we call uh, multi-system, uh, 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 what they call Kawasaki syndrome, where they have reddish around their toenails and all that. 
And uh, the major problem is the resp respiratory distress, because as soon as you get it, it starts as replicating, replicating itself. The next thing, it takes over your lungs. You have inflammation of your bronchus. That's when you start having fluid in your lungs, which normally you see people with COVID having a, a, a pneumonia symptoms and all that. From that stage, then the, the doctor will now decide to see if uh, you're going to be on ventilator because now of your bronchus, because normally when you inhale and exhale, your bronchus constricts and release itself. So now you have inflammation of your bronchus. During that process, there is no way you can breathe enough for yourself. You can breathe. You can you can get enough oxygen into your system. And remember, your cells need need oxygen. So now they have to put you on ventilators. That's where the problem is. For 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 some states, yeah, United States, especially in New York. I used to live in New York. I was living in New York in March. Uh, the major problem itself, according to uh, WHO, they said. Uh, out of 100% of people, let's say out of, uh, we have 80% that survives it. So it's it's not that everybody that gets it will die out of it. They say in every wow. five, every it's five, that's what they say. Every five, say. Huh? I said it's not. Death sentence per se. It's not, it's not really death sentence. Out of five individuals, you have five people that get it. The only chance is you have only one that will die. You have four people that will survive it. So why do you see a large number of people? Why do you see the population? When you see, when you see the result coming out, the statistics coming out of New York, you see that large population. It's because of the overwhelmed healthcare system. You understand? You have uh, emergency room that takes at least 30 patients. Okay. Then you have emergency room where yeah. you have over 300 patients coming in with the same symptoms. You know, they can't breathe, they're coughing, you understand? And every healthcare workers in there, every healthcare workers in there needs uh, PPE. When I mean PPE, personal protective uh, equipment, like your face masks, uh, your glasses to cover your eyes, your gown yeah, and all that. And they have few of it, you understand? So when it started in America, yeah, this yeah. is where the problem is. We had a president that had all this time to prepare, all this time to tell, okay, companies to produce more of these things, more ventilators. But end of the day, just like, it's a common flu, it will come and go, we shouldn't bother about it. Then as soon as it strikes, most of the hospitals in New York were not even prepared. They were not prepared. and. End of the day, most of the doctors, they didn't understand the pathogenesis of this virus. You understand? A lot of them, they didn't know at the beginning, hmm. how does it spread? At the beginning, we heard it was droplet. The next thing we heard, it can spread through air. Hmm. The next thing we heard, it survives there. A certain amount of time, it can hmm. su survive on the plastic or a surface. So as time goes on, we start seeing different symptoms, different strain of it. You understand? Okay. So that was the main major problem. Yeah. You understand? So that was when they started saying, okay, let's let's think about community community mitigation. How do we what do we do now? What do we do for people to stop the uh, spread of this virus? You understand? That was when they introduced, okay, people should start putting on face masks. People should start putting on face masks. There should be what they call a uh, lockdown of the city. And uh, also, there should be uh, isolation. When you when you're in a group, you have six feet. You, you give distance between yourself and the other person. You understand? That was when they introduced all this, and they discover it has really worked a lot. It Thank has you really can see worked. what's on the screen, right? Huh? Okay. Yes, I can see the screen. Loss of uh, smell and taste is one of the symptoms. Is one. Yeah, you're of still the there, right? Yes, I'm still here. I can see one of the questions. The questions from SK Kasim. Yes, I would say I'll tell you. I'll tell you right here that uh, when you lose smell and taste is one of the symptoms they discovered recently. But the major common symptoms you see with people with COVID are 
dry cough. When I mean dry cough, this is very spontaneous. It's not something you can easily control. Why are you sitting down there? You'll be coughing. You can't even control it. The next thing is your fever. Your fever will spike. Your temperature will spike. Then uh, mm -hmm. you have tiredness. You're weak. You take some step. You get so tired. You understand? So they start looking at all that. Then the, the, the most difficult problem, yeah. symptom where people, it becomes the respiratory problem when it takes over your lungs. Because now when it takes over your lungs, you can't breathe yourself. They have to introduce what they call ventilation, ventilators. These are machines that will assist you to breathe. And using ventilators, they are also disadvantage yeah. of it too. It can also collapse your lungs, one. It can also introduce more infection into your lungs. SK Kasim, yeah, I can see your question. I just uh, answered your question. But you should also understand that uh, when you lose smell and when you lose taste, it's not only mm -hmm. COVID. When you have malaria yeah. or typhoid, this is also a likely mm -hmm. symptom. Yeah. So you shouldn't get That's scared. True. So you shouldn't right, get let's, scared. Let's, uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, I, I think you've been able to so far deal with what coronavirus is and its mode of uh, transmission, right? Yes. Yeah, can we delve a little away from that to uh, who are those that are susceptible or vulnerable to uh, this viral infection? Everybody, everybody, everybody out there is susceptible. Everybody. <laughs> anybody can get anybody, anybody can get COVID. But the only problem is that when you have hmm. the underlying problem you have, that will become worse, especially when you have high hmm. blood pressure when you have diabetes, when you have asthma. Asthma, you know, it's difficult for them to breathe when, you know, without the pump. And uh, uh, cancer, when you're cancer, cancer patient, the immune system, especially they take medication whereby the immune system is low because you need your immune system to fight this virus. You need your immune system. So now sure. when your immune system is low, low, you can easily get it and it will be worse. So there are other underlying problems too that would when you have it, okay. it will make it more it will more it will make it more worse. It's not like you have some people that will get it, some people won't get it. The only thing is that some people are asymptomatic. When I mean asymptomatic, they don't show oh. symptoms. They don't show any symptoms. They are just carrier. All they do is distribute. Okay. They'll come to your house, talk to you, and everything. The next thing you have hmm. it the next day. Hmm. All right. Uh, that's good. Um, what are some of the precautionary measures, especially with regards to the fact that we now have the asymptomatic uh, strain of the virus? That some people are there who carry the virus, but they don't know, and it doesn't manifest in their physiognomy. So, based on this, what are some of the precautionary measures we can begin to take in order not to uh, be infected by this uh, virus? By, by this virus. That okay. That that's a good question. Uh, this is why WHO with CDC, they introduced what they call social isolation. That's one. Like my, for example, my house right now, I don't expect any visitor. You call me, you come into my house. I'll tell you clean, clear, my brother, not now. Let's wait until all these things die down before you come in. That's one, social isolation. Mm -hmm. You should avoid a crowded space where you have, especially when you're traveling, uh, Traveling right now should be suspended. Uh, to if you have any, if it's difficult for you, you really want to go out, you should put on your face masks too. That's one. Another thing, you should always wash your hands, no matter what. You should wash your hands. One thing I discover about the face mask, when you have the face mask, let me give you, let me show you an example. This is this is what we call surgical mask. This is called surgical mask. When you have a face mask, you put it on. You will discover that as soon as you have this on, it will be difficult for you to put your hands in your mouth. We have people that are nail biters, so it's difficult for them to bite their nails. So some because sometimes without this face mask, you unconsciously you can put your hand in your nose. Unconsciously you can put your hand in your mouth. Unconsciously, you can do like this. But with this face mask, 
it makes you to understand that I have something in my face. If, for example, I want to eat now, I will immediately understand there's something on my face. You understand? So, so, so it's what I tell people. It's, 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 it's always put on your face mask and always wash your hands. And when I mean wash your hands, it's not just going to the tap and just rinse your hands. No, you have to use soap. You have to wash at least twenty seconds. You know me, and you know washing my hands twenty seconds. I, I can't have my, my, my time there. Watch waiting for 20 seconds. What the advice here to do while you're washing your hand, you can be singing, singing happy birthday, happy birthday, sing, sing it twice. It will make up 20 seconds. That's a good way. <laughs> you understand? Wow. That's a very good one. <laughs> uh, all right. Yes, yes, yes. That's a very, very good one. Uh, as Don't regards forget. the Don't proliferation forget. of fake news, think around and let about me, okay. let me not cut you short i see people buying uh hand sanitizer this is a typical hand sanitizer people are buying it to buying it yeah. the best way so yeah. far is hand washing you put this on twice hmm. after two times try as much as possible to wash your hands you understand okay because i see people they always buy. I have friends. They'll tell me I have hand sanitizer. I have this thing. All you need is soap and water. Always wash your hands. Try to form that habit of washing your hands. Not only because of COVID, because there are a lot of infectious diseases out there. You can pick with your hands. Sure. All right. Um, let's talk about fake news as regards this coronavirus. At some point, I was so overwhelmed by the uh quantum information around and about coronavirus that i started feeling sick I started feeling like i was infected by the uh, virus already so uh, as a precautionary measure what what can we do uh against uh you know shielding ourselves from fake news like what most medical profession will tell you uh you look at the symptoms of coronavirus or symptoms sorry the symptoms of covid you have you you become feverish you have cough and a dry cough and uh, you have tiredness this is common cardinal symptoms you see in most of most infectious diseases you have uh, uh, malaria is the same symptoms but what they tell you is that as soon as you develop that first symptoms you try as much as possible to isolate yourself you understand make sure you have food don't stop eating okay. Don't stop eating because as soon as you have that loss of taste, you don't feel like eating anymore. Mm -hmm. They never stop. Just keep chewing it. Sure. Keep chewing it because your immune system, you need a stronger immune system to fight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just keep eating it. Just keep eating. Then as soon as you start feeling difficulty breathing, then that's when you call your medical profession. Uh, medical sure. professional. Like presently now, if you look at it, what they're treating now is not that they're treating COVID-19. What they're treating is your symptoms. That's what most doctors treat. You have fever. What do you do when you have fever? You take Panadol to bring your fever down. You understand? If you're in yeah, America, yeah. you take Talnor. We call it Talnor. Or you take Motrin. But in Nigeria, you take Panadol, you take Paracetamol. Okay, when you have cough, sore throat. Yeah. So you now look at, you call your doctor to see if they can prescribe you an antibiotic, which they call uh, Zitromax. A zip pack that helps with the sore throat. You tired? Try as much as possible to get enough rest. Rest is the key. You eat and you rest. You understand? So try as much as possible to isolate yourself. But don't never, never say, "Okay, the symptoms yeah. I'm having is malaria symptoms. I don't care about. It. Let me just keep treating malaria." No, they all have the same symptoms. Even you go on the WHO website, it tells you. As soon as you have that symptoms, don't just mm. assume malaria. Make sure you go for a test as soon as possible. We've seen cases, a lot of cases in Nigeria, they're talking about these days. People coming down with malaria mm. and it's COVID. Some of those patients are all malaria patients. They have malaria. You understand? But you, no matter how you, you, you feel, you have that malaria symptoms, don't just say uh, mm. it's malaria. Sure. The first thing to do, just isolate yourself for your loved ones. 
isolate yourself, stay away from friends, stay away from everybody around you. If I were you, I'll just get myself, get food and everything. If possible, your plate. For the sake of the loved ones. Yeah, yeah, for the sake of, you know, your loved ones. You don't want to spread it. You stay indoor. You finish eating, you can say, okay, let me see. The, the plates the plate you use, the spoon you use should be washed separately from the other plates because you don't want to give it to some one or two occupants of that house, you know? That's something you should also consider. And another thing I discover, I see like... Uh, all right, all right, sir. Uh, I discover that uh, in uh, third world countries, people have been stigmatized with it. When you have coronavirus, you get scared. Not me, I don't want people to know. I don't want this to know. You get scared. No, my brother, forget about that. Well, I was going, I was going to do that. Huh? Okay. I, I was going to talk about that. I was going to talk about that actually, oh. but before we get there, yeah, before we get there, let's talk about the level of consciousness of the people there, mm -hmm. over there, in contrast with what you know or what you think about our own level of uh, awareness about coronavirus. When you look at uh, uh, the Western world, especially you look at United States, you look at the level of awareness, it's different. One, you don't condemn where you're from. I don't say, uh, you're looking at a country that had independence a long time ago, which uh, we just had independence in 1960. You look, you're you looking at our level of education, level of, level of illiteracy. It's still high out there. Don't feel because you have a bachelor's or you have a master's, everybody in Aochi or everybody in, in Isako has a master's or has a bachelor's. There are people out there that are still, mm -hmm. still illiterate. You understand? So, True. so the, True. the level of awareness here, yeah, it's quite different from the awareness in Nigeria. Even sometimes you look at our politicians too. Our politicians, they are educated, but they still behave like illiterates. I saw videos online uh, coming from uh, River State, how the governor, you know, uh, infringe on people's rights, telling people to stay indoor and all that. No, in United States of America, we don't do that. You can still go out there. You can still shop. The only place is open our essential service. You don't tell people to stay out there. You don't force people to wear masks. It's still an option. It's choice. You understand? The only thing is that if you operate a non-essential business, you have to you have to keep it closed. If not, the government will give you fine for it. And we saw people take. They took some people, to, some business owners to court. But with essential service, especially. When it comes to food, if you're buying food, the places are opened. You understand? So the awareness in Nigeria, it's quite different from the awareness here. You can't blame our people back home. And you can't say because uh, our people are not educated or listen. You still have to understand it's all gradual process. There's a stage we're going to get to be better than this. Are you there? Yes, another problem. I see a question here. Uh, really, not really a question, a suggestion. We're comprehending, and I hope our people comply. Yeah, we try as much as possible possible to educate our people. Tell your your loved ones, your old people at home. Tell them like what I did to my mom. When he started, I had to tell my mom. I said, "This is a problem now. This is what people are going through. This is what what's going through." Tell them about the sign and symptoms, so that when they have such sign and symptoms, you know what to do. You know. We look at it from the from that end, whereby you start stigmatizing people, saying Kadiri uh, has COVID. I don't want to get close to Kadiri. I don't know. No, no, no. It's 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 not gotten. It hasn't gotten up to that. You know. All right. All right. That's a good one. Anyway, uh, why I really ask that question is because a level of awareness and consciousness about COVID nineteen. We further, uh, you know, helping uh, curbing the spread, its transmission. You know, we're not discussing uh, the issue of flattening the curve and all that. Yes. That is why I said uh, uh, community mitigation. And so when I was trying to the awareness helps to uh, bridge, uh, you know, bring it to air. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen situations where people comply with the rules. We see they slow down the the spread of it. Because you have it to stay at home, it will save someone's life, you know. 
you you have it you have your loved ones at home you stay away from them you yeah. try to isolate yourself as possible we've seen we've seen the the we've seen uh we've seen a positive result when it comes to that we've seen positive result when it comes to that but uh you're looking at the way the government is implementing it in nigeria to me it's it's wrong it's wrong the way they are implementing it in Nigeria, it's wrong. You don't tell, imagine me being a governor telling people, ah, you don't have a face mask. Arrest him, take him to the prison, take him to the police station. As soon as he gets to the police station, he gets there, all the other people are in there. He gives it to the right there. That's in, the problem. Yeah, you, you, you uh, get it to the there. Western world, yeah, you see, that was about, uh, you see in, in Italy, you see hello. Europe, you see prisoners were released home because they don't want them to have, it's the yeah. same thing in America. When you have an aligning problem, they look at your, they look at it, your age, they look at your age, they look at the underlying problem. You have heart disease or you have asthma, they'll release you home. You go serve your term at home. So I don't see why no, God was telling the people and said, because you don't have the face mask, they should arrest you. They arrest you, where are they taking you to? The person yeah. arresting you is, is being exposed to it too. True. You understand? Well, another another yeah, thing. Another thing is that you have somebody that can't even afford to eat three square meal a day. You're telling the person to buy a face mask. He will look, he will look at you and laugh at you. Mm -hmm. This thing exports. It exports our watch. watch well, our uh, that was about... Uh All right. Uh, are you done? Uh, you know, yes, yes, yes. Hello. Yes. I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. That was about the next question I was going to ask you. I was going to ask what you think about the response of our government to this uh, pandemic in contrast with uh, that of uh, the government wherein you reside. My brother, the thing when I'll tell you, we say, our government, we vote to hear people in our office. Every time I, I keep saying that, we vote to hear people. Let me give you a typical example. <laughs> Let's start with the grassroots. People, I grew up, I, when I, you know I went to Our Lady of Fatima. Okay. They were, smart, they were smart guys I went to school with. You understand? People, okay. I understood, uh, you give them opportunity to serve the people. They will do better. But today we look at, we look at people representing us. These are illiterate. Boys, boys that you, those days we know they don't stay in class. Those boys, the same people that they were, they were front, forefront of courtism in Nigeria when I was in school. They are the ones representing us. So what sure. do you expect? They bring policies to favor themselves. Hmm. They pass laws that, that will favor them. I was talking hmm. to my friend this morning. We were talking about the situation in River State. I said, uh, is it that you people don't have constitutional lawyers in uh, uh, River State to take uh, uh, the, the, the state to court? to court? You know what he told me? He said the court is even shut down. So they are not entertaining certain cases. So they listed certain mm. cases. He said even the, 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 the chief judge of the state and all that, those are unpicked by the governor. Hmm. Yes, that's true. So there is no independence of the judicial system. So what do you expect? Mm -hmm. So the rules, the rules, what we're seeing in Nigeria is total rubbish. All they are doing is, if CDC said this today in the United States, they will say this, to, they will try to apply it in Nigeria. You're forgetting this is two different society. We're talking about a society whereby we have welfare system. In the United States, we have welfare system. Just recently, there was stimulus check mm -hmm. the government gave to us. They gave me a thousand, a thousand, a thousand uh, seven hundred, a thousand two hundred and uh, five hundred for my daughter. They gave my wife a thousand two hundred. They gave her a thousand two hundred for her and another for my daughter. Then they gave my mom. They gave my mom a thousand five, one thousand uh, two hundred too. You understand? They are food stamps. We have food stamps. If you can buy food, if you don't have money to buy food. You get food stamps when you apply to the government. There are charities. There are people that donate food. There are food banks. What you do, you don't even stop. You just drive over there. You open your your trunk. They'll put food. So these are these are ways. These are things the Western government they do. Hmm. But in Nigeria, there's nothing like that. 
Today I read in the newspaper, Hotel Dollar donated $2 billion. Where is the $2 billion going to? Money that we can't even account can't even for. We can't even account for the money. And let me tell you, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised the money is even scammed. It didn't even donate anything. You don't, you, you can't tell me, Dangote, you, you have villages, you have states. Well, a lot of citizens have been saying all these are audio donations, you know? Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I believe, my brother. You understand? All right. Uh, so now you're, telling, you're telling somebody that doesn't have food. The only way it is go to farm. Another way he does is his business. You're telling the person to stay at home, to isolate himself. You understand? What do you what do you expect yeah, the person to do? The level of poverty. It's, quite sad. it's very sad. It's very sad. It's quite sad. Yeah, uh, because uh, a lot of persons are are sad. Uh, sorry, are poor on the on uh, on a multiplicity note here in our country. Uh, even before the COVID nineteen experience, poverty has been the bane uh, of our the problems. Level, so uh, let's poverty, let's attend poverty so high. Let's take let's take let's take a circle west for example. We have a senator. We have men from House of Representative. We have men from House of Assembly. What are they doing for all these years? Where is the money? Consti constituency project. Hmm. Where is the money going? It goes to their pocket. And when I when I when I'm on Facebook, I see people insult themselves towards politician. My brother, you don't don't waste your time doing that. You understand? Hmm. You, I've been to you go to Port, you go to Port to my in, in Maryland. You come to Houston. You see the houses. You you be like my brother. You understand? You be like wow. They steal the money. They are living life. They're living life, they send their children abroad. We see them when we see them, we meet most times. Then all we do, the poor ones back home sit on Facebook, spend all their time on data, criticizing, fighting themselves over politicians. And when they meet over here, they laugh over it. Then the next thing you see, oh, yeah. when... let's, let's, quickly, let's quickly attempt this question on the screen. Okay. Garuba Zakari Ochobuge is asking, what is your advice on handling of currency to avoid transmission of the virus? You know, it has been discovered that this virus can, you know, live on uh, currencies. So. Yes, if you can try as much as possible to do online transfer, you can do buy stuff without using currency, you can do that. If you cannot do that, always have your hand sanitizer and wash your hands when you handle currency because it can also be a way of trans transmitting it from one person to the other. So when you deal with currency, always have your, your hand sanitizer, close by hand, if possible. After you, do two, after you do two of these, you wash your hands. Always wash your hands. Wash your hands. When, at, when, I, when, when I'm at work, I tell my fellow workers, you know what I tell them? I tell, wash, wash, wash your hands. Wash, wash, wash your hands. So when you have to deal with currency, always yeah. wash your hands. This is something, there's no way you can say, if it's like here in the Western world, most uh, transaction we do is, uh, we, we don't we don't deal with currency most times. All I do, if I want to transfer money to somebody, okay. want, you know, I do I could do it online. If, there's, if there are ways you can do it through your phone, go ahead and do it. And another thing is safe to even do business is through online because, yeah, you have backup, you have things to show receipts. Yeah, how the money how the money left your account and how it goes into the other person's account so i'll, I'll try and i my advice to you is yeah. you have upon you have you don't have ways to to do that just always wash your hands all right uh let's go now to the issue of uh, communication information communication uh you know information communication is the responsibility of uh, uh our various media so how well has uh, the media over there performed its, respons its responsibility in, sensitiz in sensitizing the people over there uh, in contrast with ours here? Yeah, uh, before I start, before I comment on that, I would try as much as possible to talk over here and over there. Over in America, we've had uh, situations where the media has played a very vital role. We also have uh, situations where the media has also been uh, over as a rate, over, let me say, 
exaggerate the old situations. Uh, like for example, you before we had two media houses. We have uh, we have majority of media houses in the United States, but we have one media house which is in support of uh, the president here, and we have another media house which is, which is mostly against the president. You see CNN, CNN will give you information about the virus, tell you what to do. Fox TV will tell you, it's just a common flu, it will come and go. All they do is try to support the president. But it still boils down to you. You still have that opportunity to go online, read about this virus. Everything is online. You go on cdc.gov, you see the information. You go on uh, World Health Organization, the information are there too. You can educate yourself, or, you know, get more information. Why in Nigeria? You look at Nigeria in la at large, Nigeria itself, you you discover that our media also has played a very vital role and also they've been wrong information out there to give to the people. You understand? You've seen where the media try to uh, paint the whole situation in life. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you understand, but you what you still what I still tell people to do if you have a opportunity to the internet, get your information right. Uh, it's all the information are out there, it's uh, they are out there, you know. That's why we have medium, medium like this, this ouchy block. That's why we're trying to educate our people too. You, you, you get all this information, you can still go online, uh, verify the information as soon as. As soon as possible, you have your old peer parents there that can't even get access to the internet. You can talk to them. You can tell them ways, ways to 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 avoid uh, uh, avoid going going where there's where where where, they, where it's it's crowded. Uh, when you have uh, COVID nineteen, how to isolate yourself, what to do, and all that, you know. Hello? Uh, there's another um, question. I just, I just right, saw another um, question. I just saw another I can, question. I, 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 yeah, I can see a question. I just, said, uh, can, you know, superimposed a, a question, another yeah, question. Yeah, I, mean, I just screen. saw another question. That? They said, can sunlight kill the virus? This is the information we get. We got at the beginning. They said, uh, remember, we they used to say, you can't find COVID in Africa because mm -hmm. it's hot. You understand? Uh, scientifically, they have not been uh, researched that prove that sunlight can kill the virus. You, under, you understand? Like what our president, United States President Trump said the other day, that uh, the sun ray, uh, listen, my brother, I don't listen to all that. We, they've not been uh, researched to prove because something to me, it has to be, uh, it has to be, um, the evidence has to be tested. It's it's not just saying, I don't believe sunlight can kill the virus. I don't believe that. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's now go over to the mode of treatment. Uh, so far, so good. There has been no cure. Uh, no vaccine has been, uh, you know, brought up to say, okay, this is actually the cure for COVID-19. However, we've been seeing, uh, you know, people that have been treated of the disease and they come out uh, negative. Uh, what do you say? How how is this possible? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, the mode of treatment first. I would. Uh, I know most people here. They are not. Uh, uh, they're not really in the medical profession. But I will explain. I will explain in details. When you when you get in contact with COVID nineteen, the first thing your immune system does is what they call immune immune response. Immune response. That means your immune system will try to attack it. How does it, how does your immune system it produce antibodies? When you look at when you look at the virus itself, the virus does have some spike, protein spike. So those protein protein spike itself, that okay. is the way it transfers genetic material into your cells. So now when you produce those antibodies, what does the antibodies do? The antibodies try as much as possible to mesh towards that spike so that this spike cannot connect to your receptor molecules in your cells. That's one thing. So as okay. soon as it's able to do that, as soon as it's able to do that, then the antibodies will engulf those virus. Then you have the antibody system in your system for a while. So that next time you're exposed to it, 
there's a protein already produced that will just attack it straight. So that's one, that's that's the way the immune system responds when it comes to COVID-19. But so far, they've not been able to discover any vaccine. They've not been able to discover, uh, uh, they've, they, they've not been able to say, yeah, this is the medication that really cures it. What we saw, we saw when they said uh, chloroquine cures uh, COVID-19. This, this, so far, the research they've done, the, they are the, 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 effective, the disadvantage of uh, chloroquine is more than the advantage. When we're growing up, we knew, we, me and you knows when you take chloroquine, the side effect or the adverse effect of it, you know, you know it is. Yeah, it's very it. Yes, also it, it also. And when you take a of it, it gets to give you other effects of uh, reddish eyes and all that. Good, good. You know all that. So the adva the disadvantage is more when you compare the advantage. Another problem it causes eye problems. So you don't want somebody that has eye problems. Mm. That has COVID, you want to give him chloroquine too. It's like you're digging, you're digging his grave. Mm. You understand? So what they do Already. is that so far, what they do is that they treat the symptoms. When I mean they treat the symptoms, what mm. symptoms do you have? Do you have fever? Yes. Oh. What do you do? You want to bring your temperature down. You want to take panadol. You have cough, okay. sore throat. What do you take when you have sore throat? You they give you an antibiotics. They discover antibiotics works. So they'll give you zipa. I believe you have heard of zipa, which is called azitro, azitromyosin. Sure. You understand? You okay. take it for most times they give it between 12 and 14 days. You try as much as possible to take the if the doctor give you all of, if the doctor gives you that prescription, make sure you finish it. Don't stop. Then when okay. it comes to uh when it comes to tiredness, what do you want to do when you're tired? You want to rest. Sure. You want to rest. You want you want to have enough rest. So then you, your immune system will be stronger to fight the virus. What else do you want to do? You want to eat balanced diet. You want to eat your fruit. Oranges. Oranges has ascorbic acid that builds your immune system. You understand? You want to eat more yeah. fruits? Sometimes people do take ginger too. It works. You understand? So, so far right now, what we do, we treat the symptoms. That's what the doctors does right now. They treat the symptoms. Just recently, oh, there was a medication. There was a medication they said it shows effectiveness against it. The medication is called Redemcivia. Redem so the medication is used. It was produced for Ebola, Ebola virus. You know, Ebola was a, Ebola is a yes, virus. Yes. So that medication, yes. they, they just approved it recently. United States. They're using it too. You understand? Also, they, yeah. they put on yeah. ventilators when you can breathe, when you have difficulty breathing, because now you have you have your uh, alveoli, alveoli is, is inflamed. Your alveoli is like it, it's like it's just like orange, it's inflamed. So you have just, uh, smaller yes. air packs in your lungs. Yeah, yeah. Where the, where you have those, where you have the gaseous exchange, where oxygen comes yeah. out and carbon dioxide. When uh, where carbon dioxide, where carbon dioxide mm -hmm. comes out. Then oxygen goes in, so that that location is inflamed. You can't breathe. You'll be struggling. Your O2 saturation, that means the oxygen in your blood now will be between 70s and 80s. And what the doctor, what they want to see, they want to see above 90, at least 99, 98 percent. So now they'll put you. They have to decide to put you on ventilators. That's where they put you on ventilators to help you breathe. Sometimes people go on ventilators, they survive it. The immune system will fight it. Sometimes they go on vent ventilators, they don't make it. One reason they really go for ventilators, they don't make it. Like, uh, uh, one reason is that uh, with ventilation, with the ventilator, they can easily introduce infection into your system. You understand? So, another reason is that, uh, like, when, when we had it in the United States, uh, in New York City, it was, it overwhelmed the healthcare system whereby you have, like, an emergency room hospital that sees like 30 patients. You have like 300 patients coming. You understand? So for example, I have, let me use uh, illustration. I have John on ventilator, right? It's doing better. I can, see a, board. I can see a white chalkboard behind you. Yes, I yes. I was thinking yes. You're using for uh, graphical purpose. I can see you have the COVID-19 uh, yeah. <laughs> drawing. 
yeah, okay. Yeah, this is this is this is just a, a rough joint. This is this is the virus itself. This is uh, the virus itself. This is the protein spike I was talking about. The yeah, protein yeah. spike. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Within the virus, you have an envelope. This is the outer layer, layer protecting the virus. Then inside the virus, there's what they call genetic materials. Those genetic okay. materials are the one that makes up the, the virus itself. So as soon mm -hmm. as this virus goes, goes to your lungs, your lungs, you have lung cells. What mm -hmm. makes up cardiac, cardiac itself? It's cells. How does your sure. cells survive? How does your cells survive? Two things, oxygen. Glucose. Every food you eat breaks down to glucose. You understand? Yeah. So, so now, when it gets to the cells, there is like a key. This this spike is like a key and lock. The lock mm. is the is the cell receptors. Then this mm. key will key into the lock. When it key into the lock, it will tell the cell to open. As soon as the cells open, it goes inside. Now it mm. will take control of the cell's nucleus. You understand? Transfer is genetic material. Yeah. Transfer is genetic material. Like right the now, DNA. Class now. <laughs> transfer, it will transfer its genetic material into the cell nucleus and tell the cell, start producing me. So now this mm. is how the cell start producing more of it. So as soon as you have a lot of it in your system, now it will overwhelm your immune system. Mm. So the, the antibodies you will produce, the antibodies you will produce will stop this process of key and lock. You understand? So those antibody yeah, proteins, those antibody proteins will mesh to these spike proteins. So now this cannot key and lock into the cells. Then the immune system will have enough time to engulf those virus. The first thing you can see the question yet. What 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 should be the first thing to do when you think you have exposed? The first thing you do, you isolate yourself. You isolate yourself. You understand? If you have most countries, for as, most countries, they don't really give the test as soon as possible. You isolate yourself. You give yourself enough rest. You see, you try to monitor your system to see if, what kind of symptoms you produce, uh, you, 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 you are showing. If you are showing different symptoms, especially you start having breathing problem, then you call your doctor. Yeah, in America, for Nigeria, they said you call uh, what department again? Is it N NCDC? Okay, the particular face recommended marks so far. Most most medical they 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 recommend for medical professionals are they call it N95. N95, but when you use the surgical face mask, which is this, it works. But I'm seeing Nigerians wearing Accra face mask, clothes made from clothes, my brother. That doesn't protect you. It doesn't protect you. So if you try, if you can as much as, if you can get face masks like this, it protects you to an extent. But the Accra face mask you put on, it doesn't protect you. It's just fashion. Then if you are able to get access to N95 masks, my brother, don't waste your time. Get it. I, I'm seeing another question. The question said, uh, could there be any relationship between COVID-19 and malaria? So far, they've not been able to establish any relationship between them. Uh, malaria is a parasitic in infection. It's not really a virus. So that's where, when it comes to when they said uh, chloroquine works, people are still skeptical about it because it's parasitic, parasitic infection. Infection is different from a virus. Even an antibiotics that you use for bacteria cannot even cure cannot cannot cure a virus if you have a virus a viral infection. So there's big difference between them. There's no relationship between them. Both of them are too different. Malaria is parasit parasitic infection. Then uh, COVID-19 is, is more of a viral infection. All right. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, I was another, not another thing, another, thing, another, thing, another thing I try to forget. Uh, there's what they call convalence uh, serum uh, procedure, whereby if you add COVID and you... 
okay. the shame and you heal from it, they will take your serum and transfer it to somebody else that has COVID. That's another method that you do. Giving somebody else, like you have COVID, you heal from it, they'll take your serum and they'll give it to somebody that is sick of COVID. That's another technique they use too. Okay, okay. Now you have someone that was treated of COVID nineteen, and the person gets so, better. Yes, if I understand you're you. The, the person you're gets better. To, yeah. they, they now take. Yeah. yeah, you're exposed to COVID. You had COVID, right? COVID nineteen. Then you became well okay. after you had all the treatment. You became well. So remember when you became well. One reason you were it's not the medication, it's because of your immune system. Because your immune system. So you have antibodies against it. So they will take your serum, they have okay. that antibodies, then they will put it, okay. they will transfer it to another person. That's just in a layman term. But there's a process, a lot of process, the process they have to go through. Oh, okay. This is done in Western world. All right, uh, before before you attend on Nigeria. All right, uh, okay, okay. Before you attempt another question on the screen, uh, let's talk about my own fears now. Uh, you know, when HIV AIDS came, the whole world was running health as care, just as we are doing now to, you know, get a cure for the virus. And till now, we've had no cure per se for corona, sorry, for uh, HIV and AIDS. So do you also fear that we will begin to manage coronavirus, just the way we've been managing uh, HIV AIDS as perhaps a lifestyle? HIV virus and uh, COVID-19, they're both virus, but they're two different viruses. You understand? When HIV started, we, we never understood it to a certain, we only understood to a certain level. You remember when it started, they didn't call it HIV. They, they found it, it was more common among the gay community, you understand, until they started, started getting all around and all that. Okay. It's, it's quite different from uh, COVID-19. COVID-19, HIV virus itself, it, it attacks your immune system. You understand? That is why when you become, when you have HIV, they're looking at your CD4 counts. If it's less than 500, you become... It's you, you know, but this is not what COVID does. COVID okay. is more upper respiratory uh, infection. You understand? The problem is that uh, vi vaccines, you see, vaccine itself, it's uh, let me tell you all the, how to create vaccine. Vaccine is it's an attenuated uh, virus itself, it's like a fence virus. The potent of that virus, they'll take the potent out of it. They will engineer the virus itself, the COVID virus itself. Mm -hmm. Then they will, they will inject it into your system. Why are they injecting the virus, the less potent one? Because they want an immune response. You understand? They want you okay. to create that antibody to fight it. So as soon as it's able to create the antibodies, next time you're exposed to it, you have the antibodies already to fight it off. You understand? So now, okay. how do, it's all process. The quickest they've been able to create a vaccine is five years. It was a Ebola vaccine. The minimum is five mm -hmm. years. So we're still watching if they're going to be do, able to do it within one year. Because there are things they have to look at. You don't want to produce a vaccine mm -hmm. whereby you're trying to solve a problem, you create more problems. And create another problem. Yeah, yes. and they're still trying to understand the they still trying to understand the pathogenesis of this virus itself. It was just recently we started seeing children with Kawasaki syndrome. Children that are exposed to uh, yeah. COVID, they start having Kawasaki syndrome. You understand? Multi-system uh, okay. inflammation, you know? There was nothing like this when it all started, when I would start seeing it. So they're still trying to understand the, the, the virus itself, and they're still, they're still trying to develop vaccine. We just, it's just going to be a matter of time, maybe probably in one year or two, we're able to get. But for now, we have to live with it. We have to mitigate the whole process. We have to wear our face masks. We have to wash our hands. We have to avoid crowds, you know, and all that, crowded places. 
I'm seeing it. Seem, All I'm right, seeing uh, it. There's a question on the screen. How do we ensure, how do we ensure that the provision items bought from a store or supermarket are coronavirus free before we consume? Everything has to be washed. You understand? If, for example, you go to one of the stores, you buy something, and uh, you 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 bring it home. As soon as you get home, you try as much as possible to wash your hands. You understand? COVID itself, there is a certain amount of time it can survive in its office. Doesn't mean it can survive for three days in its office. You understand? So when you bring when you bring something outside to your home, you have to wash. You understand? Like for example, yeah. when we get when we get mails, post office mail, we don't bring it straight up to our inside the house. What we're doing in my garage, me and my wife, we open our mail, we put on gloves. If we don't wear gloves, we open it and we wash our hands. You understand? Those are precautionary methods you can take. Okay. I see a question another here. Another one on the screen. Can hot liquid kill the virus when it's still in your lungs? Uh, let me tell you one thing. The, 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 the environment of your lungs is very mused. When I mean mused is that it's very cold. Most things can grow in your lungs. You understand? Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you have an odd uh, uh, stuff injected to your lungs or liquid in your liquid in your lungs. Your lungs are very <laughs> mused. compounding the problem. Yeah, your your lungs are your lungs your lungs are very mused. mused. So there's no way you can say yes. Uh, the environment is hot. No, it's cold. Very moist. Anything that goes in there could grow, can easily grow in your lungs. I believe that's one way, that's one reason. When when it goes in when it goes in your lungs, it becomes worse. All right. Uh so let's I see I see Prince Cardi. I see Prince. Um let, let, I see I, I see okay, okay. Prince Cardi was asking how long does it take? I see a question on the screen now. I see a question from Ryan. Ryan Bells is my friend. He lives in New York. He said, My people want palliative, not this long story. My yeah, brother, yeah. palliative, we will we, 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 we'll give palliative. <laughs> Since he started, I've sent, I, I, I don't want to mention names, but we've been able to contribute, you know, people that, that need needs, needs it. But one thing is that you still have to educate your people. You have to tell them the truth. You have to tell them what and what to do. You understand? We can't avoid that. True. So palliative itself, it's another aspect of it. You help people, you give people, you know. I've seen where people criticize others to say, if you're giving palliative, you shouldn't be taking picture of it. Listen, my brother, I don't want to talk about all that, you know. But when you give, that's the best, that's one good thing. But another thing is that you still have to educate people. You have to know the pathog pathogenesis of this uh, uh of this virus, they have to know how they transmit it. They have to know what are the precautionary methods they have to take. They have to know if they have to, if they are exposed, what to do. You understand? If somebody is exposed to 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 COVID nineteen, and end of the day, you're giving the person palliative care. Are you treating? You know, helping out. You understand? It will keep spreading it. So the first thing you do is educate the people about it. Then you give palliative. Giving palliative is a good, good thing to do. How long do you think it will take before they, they create the COVID vaccine? So far, nobody can say how long right now. CDC, WHO, every country, every right now they they on a speed dial. Everybody's trying as much as possible to see if they can. Just yesterday, I was reading that uh, I was reading something on Daily Mail. I was talking about the found the va va vaccine. Let me tell you one thing about drug trial. Drug trial is no one day. Drug trial of making vaccine is no one mm. day. It takes process. It's stage by stage. It, get, it has almost four stages. You understand? So a situation, imagine uh, a vaccine is, uh, or a drug is made to, to cure COVID. And the next thing, you started that developing another respiratory problem. What do you know what people will do? They'll sue the company. You understand? They'll sue the government too. So it takes time. It's not something you just, uh, you know, find solution and you start. You have to, you have to go through process. 
So, so far now, we All don't right, know. Let's talk about exploring local remedies. Five years to produce a uh, vaccine for Ebola. All right, I was talking about exploring local remedies. You see, uh, Madagascar, we're able to come up with uh, something. They call it uh, CVO plus or thereabout. Uh, Tony, uh, Tony drinks. And a lot of persons here have been talking about making concoction and all that. So what do you think about exploring local remedies uh, in oh. view of uh, fighting COVID-19? I don't really have much uh, information about the mass Madagascar, Madagascar uh, Tony drink. But one thing I was when I was reading, they did I discovered the plant they used. They said the plant is most mostly used for uh, malaria for to treat malaria. Uh, True. Uh, to me, the best treatment right now is treating the symptoms. You understand? If Madagascar said they have a cure for it, the question is that have you been able to prove? Some people, some persons will tell you they had 157 cases and they've not had any debt. Like what I told you right from the beginning, the, the cost of people dying of COVID is not really the disease itself. It's because of the overwhelmed healthcare system. Silently, people are spreading it. When it started in New York, silently, people are spreading it. The next thing you see, people coming, a lot of people come into the emergency room with the same complaint. You understand? Okay. So if you say in a country has 157 debt, uh, 157, COVID cases and no debt, that, that's not really something, that's not a yardstick to say they have found the cure. If I have if I have 157 debt, a form of 157 patients of COVID and no debt, that's not a yardstick. You can easily treat them. One hospital can take care of them in the United States. But when you have over 3,000 a day with the same symptoms, trust me, that tonic will not work. You understand? So looking at the statistics they're giving out, that's not something you have to use as a yardstick. I was reading this morning, you saw I, there was a comment I made on your page that was talking about uh, the president of Madagascar Gasca saying they're quitting WHO. That's a drastic decision. You don't do that. You don't do that because there are all the benefits they get through WHO. You don't understand? You don't just say because you found a cure and uh, WHO don't want to approve the cure. We, we, we don't, you don't just find a cure from nowhere and start saying it, it cures COVID. Come and show us, how does it cure COVID? You understand? Does, how does it boost your immune system? How does it block this spike, this uh, protein spike? You understand? You don't want to give somebody uh, a tonic, a drink, then the next thing, you have more problems. It's not that I'm trying to put down my continent, but if you said you have a call, come and show us how does this thing work? How does it work? Hello, are you still there? I think the, the network is trying to obstruct the good work we are doing here. Yeah, I see Garuba is saying thank you for the response. It's clear to me that bread biscuits cannot be washed because before consumption. Uh, when I uh, when I said bread, does that mean uh, when uh, I, you don't have to uh, wash your bread? Question. Yeah, I'm looking at it. When your bread comes, your bread comes in a pack, right? Your biscuit comes in a pack. You under you understand it's already pro 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 protected. When you're taking it, when you have that bread, when you buy it from the store, when you get home, you wash your hands. You can clean the bread. You can clean the pack itself, but you don't have to clean the bread because the bread inside is not infected. You understand what I'm saying? You, you know? I see a question from Ryan Bell. He said, this is a question or a suggestion. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, let's treat this issue of... Uh, hello? Yeah, I'm here with you. Okay, let's let's display Ryan Bell's uh, uh, question. That our government are making money from this pandemic. Raymond Dupesi that had the same virus said he was treated with malaria. Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. 
I'm having a bad connection right now. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Look at I the can, question. I can see the question. Okay, okay, now, said now, they said now, our government. There's a whole back and forth around about the question whether or not COVID-19 is real. Okay. And now because he was treated, according to him, with, uh, you know, malaria drugs and he got better, he feels he wasn't infected uh, by COVID-19, that it was malaria he was suffering from. And so the government is making money off, uh, you know, the situation. What can you say to that? Okay, my, my first, before I respond to that, I'll ask you a question. Is the uh, doc, doc Percy a medical professional? No. You're talking about malaria, you're talking about COVID. Both uh, mm. diseases present the same symptoms. They present almost the same symptoms. Feverish, tiredness, coughing, sore throat. Sometimes you don't even get sore throat when you get malaria. You understand? Sure. So if they are treating you, if they're treating the symptoms, what would you think? You understand? Sure. When you're treating the symptoms, you think you're treating malaria. Yeah. What do you treat in malaria? You treat the symptoms too. So if they're treating the symptoms, that's what it thinks. To me, I don't really believe our government is making money out of it. It's just that we have a, situ we have a situation whereby uh, we have opposition, we have government in power, we have opposition. There's sure, they're surely going to be criticism, everything you do. So I don't really believe the government is making money off. Sure. You know, I don't believe that. All right, uh, let's make progress. Um, I've seen videos on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, even on YouTube, uh, as regards the treatment, the, uh, this politics and the treatment of uh, people with COVID-19 in the U.S. We've seen black, seen black women cry that uh, their children or their husbands were not attended to because they were blacks. Uh, what do you say about that? That is real. We've seen cases like that. We've seen race, 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 race mixed with all this. Uh, we see a situation mm. whereby we have a male and a white, we have a, uh, uh, we have an African American come to the emergency room and we have uh, a white guy comes to the emergency room. Now there's a decision who to put on vent. We've seen a situation whereby the black man is supposed to go on vent, but he'll give it to white, to the white guy. It happens in America. We see that a lot. We see that a lot. Racism is something you can't just stop easily. You understand? Because if you look at the percentage of doctors we have in America, majority of the doctors are white. Even if we have immigrants, yeah. we still have majority of the doctors are white. You understand? So when you have a white man as a doctor trying to make a decision who to put on ventilators, it's for sure he's going to choose his color first. You know, we see that too. Even in our society too. Even in our society, we see, we saw when uh, the chief of staff I had the same problem. What happened? They said they had only one ventilator in Abuja, but that ventilator was flew with him to Oliver. <laughs> we've seen situation mm -hmm. whereby we've seen situation not only race too. We talk of class too. We've seen, we've seen situation where they said there's no test kit, but one celebrity or one billionaire, or one millionaire comes out and tell you he just did did the test. You understand? Hmm. For sure, this is common. It's a common problem. It's peculiar to all society, not just one society. We might not have race issue in Nigeria, but we might have tribalism. We might see that too. So we've seen, true, we've, true, seen very we've, true. We've, seen, we've seen situations like that in the United States. I'll tell you the truth. We've seen situations like that. I've been in the right, medical. Uh, I've, been, I've been in the medical field for, for 15 years now. I've seen where I walked into a patient's room and just because I'm black, he'll tell me I don't, I don't need this nurse. I don't need this nurse. You understand? I don't need him to take care of me. We've seen situations like that. I've wow. seen situations like that. Now let's talk about how this affects uh, how you see the world. The world right now. <laughs> The world right now, it's going to be, there's going to be changes. There's going to be a lot of changes. Now we're going to see people very conscious okay. of their environment. We're now seeing people, 
that what they do now the most times uh, be, uh, before now we don't see people wash their hands often but now we see people do that sure we're gonna see we're gonna see jobs whereby majority of the jobs now are gonna be from home we're gonna see schools yeah. Right. Schools going through most times it's going to be more of online school schooling, so a lot of things is going to change. A lot is going to change for now, and we're going to see government taking more drastic okay. approach when it comes to uh, infectious diseases. You understand because the majority of this con majority of the countries affected. We see where the presidents they, they, more, they were more careless. With your approach, you know, so we're gonna see a lot of changes now. Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I can see and hear you loud and clear. Yes, I have all the time. All to right, go um. Through. So we should keep waiting for the questions all right. to come in. I have all the time today. I'm off from work. All right. I, I, okay. I, 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 I thought you wouldn't see that. So I had to like ask them to keep the questions coming. Yeah. Um, let's talk about you. Uh, yeah. How were you able to break into your profession? And what inspired you to become a nurse? You know, yeah. here in Nigeria, let's talk about Afema now the mentality is that you no know, when we are growing up we believe the male version of a health worker is a doctor why the female version of a health worker is a nurse so <laughs> let's hear from you okay <laughs> let me let me start let me at the beginning when I was in uh, our lady of Fatima required went to our lady of Fatima when I took my GSS three exam my junior senior uh, my junior professional uh, junior certificate Huh? We call it Junior Waik. Junior Waik. When I took it then, we were 14 of us in my class that did very good in integrated science. My set was 97 sets. I had uh, Jeffrey Gibbono, Ambrose uh, Ojiko. We had a couple of them. So, uh, 14 of us, we did extremely good. So well, then we had uh, Mr. Mwabino as our principal then, and uh, Mr. Oshoki as our vice principal. So there was a meeting we had that day. He called us into the into his office and he said, uh, "The fourteen of you guys will make the science class. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because we did very good. They call us. They, our names. We were called in front of the, the entire school. You understand? But deep down inside my mind, that was not what I wanted. I wanted to become. I wanted to be a lawyer because my other brother was in law school then. My other brother was mm -hmm. in law school, so I always wanted to be a lawyer." So I, after my high school, after my secondary school education, I tried to get into law school in Ekuma. I couldn't. So I started with a, a diploma in social works. Then I went up to uh, sociology until I won American visa lottery to come to the United States. So back home, I never knew I was a nurse, a free nurse. You understand? I wasn't really working as a professional nurse, but I was a nurse at home mm -hmm. because I was the one that was taking care of my mom. My mom had stroke. She couldn't. She couldn't help herself. I was the one. I'll give her bath in the morning. Change her. This was what I was doing. I never knew until I came to the United States. My uncle now introduced me into the profession. He said, "You know what? Try, try to see if uh, uh, you just try the nursing assistant program." So when I started it, I started seeing all those things I used to do back home. I was, you know, it was the difference was that. Now, now I'm being paid for being a nurse. Back home, it was, it was just something I was doing. So, end of the day, I got my first uh, job. I worked with an agency for like two months. I lost the job because the job, uh, the agency lost the contract with the with the nursing home. So, a friend, a friend of mine, just like an uncle to me, he now introduced me to one of the one of the largest hospitals in New York. It's, it's called Montefiore. So when I went for the interview, I did very good for the interview. I did very, very, very good. So started working, the manager, my manager then, she was just like a mom to me. She started, you know, encouraging me. I met my wife. She was the one, she was also encouraging me too. So, you know, you're smart, you know, you can do it. I, you know, try, try and see if you can, you know. 
So that was then I just said, oh, you know what? Let me try this part of it, you know? So I went to nursing school. It was tough at the beginning because my nursing classes, we started at 60 of us, but only 12 of us made it through. Only 12 made it through. Nursing feed in America is not easy. It's not easy, especially unlike, you know, unlike we, unlike the way we were going to, we went to school in Nigeria. Our parents would pay yeah. for the school fees. What we do, we study. Here in America, I was going to school. I had a family. My wife was pregnant. Then she was the one really taking care of the home bed. Then uh, I was working and I was still going to school. So it wasn't easy. In the morning, my classes start as from eight o'clock. I wake up by, by, I wake up around four o'clock. I would, you know, read my books till like uh, six thirty seven. Take my bath. Then I'll start going to school. I get up from school four o'clock. 4 p.m. When I get up, 4 p.m. What the next thing I do straight, I go to bed. When I get home, I have to sleep till like uh, 10 o'clock at night. Then I'll read from 10 o'clock to like 4 o'clock, and I'll go to bed. Wake up 4 o'clock again. So it was it was difficult. It, it was it was the price I paid. You know, sacrifice. It was a lot of sacrifice. Which today I never regretted it. But you know, it's a beautiful profession. Look at it now. We have. Uh, 30 million jobs lost in America so far. But we know since they're still begging us to come work. You know, you understand? It's a very lucrative profession in Western world. Uh, last year, I went to Dubai. I went to my family for vacation. We got to Dubai. My wife fell in love with the city and all that. She started looking on how to relocate to Dubai. Quickly, uh -huh. it was easy for us to say, OK, let's transfer our license. Let's see if we can get a job there. You know, the... The hospitals in the Dubai, they were promising us uh, free accommodation and, uh, you know, they will pay us more than what they pay us in America. I just told my wife, I said, we shouldn't be doing this land. Let's think about going back to school, you know. Houston is a beautiful place for us. Let's stay in Houston. Anytime we feel we want to visit again, we can visit Dubai. So nursing is a very beautiful profession. Uh, in Nigeria, you know, back home in Nigeria, we don't really appreciate nurses in Nigeria. They pay, they are paid peanuts. They don't pay them that much. And, uh, you know, uh, most people, most parents, they look at nursing as more of a, a something uh, for f uh, fem uh, feminine, something more feminine than masculine. Okay. You know? Even in America. The, the question proper. Yeah, even in America, my nursing classes, my nursing classes, most of the classes I took, we have like almost like uh, 20, 20 to 40. Uh, we have like 40, 45, sometimes uh, female nurses, uh, nursing students. Then we have like four, four, four or five uh, male nurses. The field right mm -hmm. now is the same thing too. You see more ladies than men, you know. And it's, uh, my brother, it's difficult too. It's difficult to cope with the field. Sometimes you, you know, to do, to deal with women is not easy, you know, when, especially when you're working with men. There are times when I tell one of my workers, ah, my dad, how you do? Ah, everything. She'll be like, now nah, nah, you they greet me. You they greet uh, Angela. You they greet Angela. You know, they greet me for almost one week. This is something not intentional, you But the next thing, you know, we like mediators between right. them, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so far, so good. There's a question anyway, let, before we round up the show. Uh, uh, Mr. Yekini Sado, uh, one of your brothers here in Aoche, he's saying, what is the solution to this type of infection disease, infectious disease? Knowing COVID-19 is not the first and won't be the last. Okay. We're going for it won't be the last. It will be the last. <laughs> no. <laughs> to be practical, it's not going to be the last. Okay. To, to practical, it's not going to be last. Uh, the solution right now, the solution right now, when, when, when it comes to infection, there's something. Uh, it's it's still. I would say it's it's avoidable to an extent, but still unavoidable because every culture, different places all over this world, there are different kind of animals they feed on. Uh, in America, we mostly eat chicken, we eat uh, cow meat and all that. So first, you go to Africa, men still eat bush meat, monkeys, you know. You go to China, there are exotic animals, they eat bat. Some of these animals, some of, some of the animals we're talking about, these are like normal, normal flora. They're like 
it's just part of those animals. So as soon as you start eating it, you, you're going to find it among the human population. So yeah. it's something that is, that is known, uh, it's not, uh, you can avoid it. But the only thing we can do is that uh, there's always precautionary uh, precautions yeah. we have to take when we have situations today. You've seen the spread of this virus because the world itself, the government is, itself, the government failed us. You understand? It was failure from the government. That was why we had a white spread. When Ebola came, it wasn't white spread. You understand? They tackle yeah. it as soon as possible. So when this thing was, when it was in China, when it was in China, scientists, doctors could have been sent down there to understand the virus itself, know its pathogenesis. Let, most countries just said, let China, let, let them deal with it, let them deal with it. Forgetting that this world is a global world. What affects China? Mm -hmm. You will affect America. Will affect the entire mm -hmm. world. So it's a lesson to us now, you know. So I'm seeing a quick right. question here. Yeah. How true is it that the COVID virus been originated from a, from a lab? So far, those are things uh, we we see on the newspaper, you know. We don't know how true it is, you understand? We don't really know how true it is. But when you look at how the way people are saying it, the, the, there is in uh, Wuhan, China, there's two laboratories close to the market in Wuhan, China. One is 50 miles from it. It's called the Institute, Institute of virologists. These labs, uh, yeah. what they're doing there is that they study virus because some of these virus, they can, they can, they can re-engineer re it, re-engineer yeah. it to medical, to use, to, they re-engineer it for medical purpose. Sometimes they re-engineer it to fight cancer cells. So they study yeah. this virus. I don't understand when people say it's originated from the lab, it can be true. It can also be false. We don't know. When, I'm, when, you are, when we say you originated from the lab, you've seen situations where people are careless when they deal with these specimens. So it jumps yeah. from those specimens to human, from human, you know, it starts spreading. So it can be true. It, it also can, you know, it can be some, it might be from, from bats, the way they are saying it. So from, from the market. So it's, it's not something, something I can say, I can pinpoint and say really it's from the lab. You understand? All right. Uh all right now, uh, the last question as regard COVID-19, before we now dive into lighter notes, um, tell our people the severity of this thing. Because uh, there is currently a sporting competition called fans competition going on in Aochi right now, okay? Where the people go out to play football. And even in the world of football, where football originated from, they've actually closed down sporting activities and all that. I wonder why we do that. So since you are in the Western world and you are, uh, you know, in the scheme of things, I believe you can better send the, drive the message home. What is the severity of COVID-19? COVID-19, it's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's real. It's real. My advice to my people is that stay at home. Your life is more important than the soccer game you want to go watch. Your life is more important than the political campaign. Your life is more important than jumping, moving with one politician to another politician, trying to going from one campaign grant to another, or going from one soccer game to another. Your life is more important than going to parties. Your life is more important than going to any gathering, like church gathering, mock gathering. Just stay at home, take care of yourself. You can pray in your house, you can pray in your, you can, you can, your church itself, it's not the building itself, you know? You can do that. Yeah. Your so I would advise people, stay at home, avoid large gatherings. If you want to go, if you really want to go, make sure you have your face mask, not those Accra masks you always put on. Mm -hmm. so you have no, the, the, the problem is, the problem is, as regards the mask, you see, that surgical mask that people now put on is becoming very expensive and unavailable for even the health workers because of the panic buying associated with it. That is why the government at different levels have uh, suggested that we use the, uh, you know, homemade tailored mask. Anyway, away from that, there's a question now on the screen. I think you can see it. How do we inculcate a long-lasting habit like hand washing and high level of personal hygiene to our people, knowing their level of 
literacy. This is coming from uh, Sayakini Sado. Yes, uh, this is something you can do at home. This is something you can do at home. You can talk to your old, your your age parents. You can talk to your sister and brother. Try to as much as possible to remind them to wash their hands. Sometimes my kids do. When I come in, they say, "Daddy, go wash your hands." You understand? Mm -hmm. When I come yes. from home, they say, "Daddy, go take your shower." This is something you mm -hmm. can do yourself. Remind your friends around you. Remind your family member. Wash your hands. It's very important. It's priceless. You can buy washing your hands in the market. It's even better than even putting on these hand sanitizers. You understand? It's cheap. Just get soup and water. It's easy. Sing your happy birthday twice. Happy birthday to you while you're washing your hands. You know, you have 20 seconds. You understand? So it's very, very important yeah. to always wash your hands. That's what I tell people. Okay. Always wash your hands. Irrespective of you. COVID or no COVID, you. always Thank wash your hands. You understand? You very, we have very other much. infectious diseases you can transmit by touching. You understand? So you should always do hand washing. Sure. Practice hand washing. Make it part of you. Another thing you should do: make as much as possible stay out, stay in your house. You understand? Isolate. If you have the virus, you feel the symptoms. Isolate yourself. Don't say, "Ah, I got it from somebody. I want to give it to another person." That's wrong. <laughs> yeah. so that's, witchcraft. Huh? that's witchcraft uh, yeah some people they want to do it since i since somebody gave it to me i want to give it to somebody or another person no that's wrong just isolate yourself then make the proper phone calls you call the required if you have a breathing problem you call your doctor or you call ncd there are numbers i try as much as possible put the numbers on online for you know yeah. for the for most of our okay. viewers to see it. you you feel symptoms of it don't say it's a malaria symptom because of that i'm not going to see the doctor sometimes the all symptoms they have the same symptoms so my brother i will advise you to always wash your hands you understand wash all your right. hands thank you very very much um is my is mama at home yeah mama is at I home I promise you, I'm going to put her on. She's sleeping right now. She's sleeping oh. right now. But my wife is awake. If you want to say hi to my wife, she's here. All right, all right, all right. Let's see the wife of our promising after my son. Oh, it, looks like, it looks like she stepped out already. It looks like she, all right. she stepped out already. All right, so I'll say something in a circle that you can still remember. Probably a proverb, an adage. <laughs> Oh, Manager of a Vancouver principal, Gueno. That's one. I want to see another okay. one. Urobo wa umie mule wo umie ti zogole. All right, that's nice. Um, okay, okay. Uh, a proverb now. A proverb in a circle that you live by. Ah, let me think of one. Let me think of one. My brother, I can't remember anyone right now. <laughs> okay, maybe I, I can say one and you interpret it. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are you The only part I heard is egg good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to break it down a bit. Uh, <laughs> Something good, oh, body. I don't understand. Can you say it for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it literally means when a goat is ready to move about or wander about indiscriminately without yeah. warning, um, it should be ready for the repercussions. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. oh yeah, we is a cane, you know. When a goat is... roams around, really. It gets it, it get beaten with a cane. This is, this is something. Uh, this is. Uh, I always wish. You know, my parents are more city dwellers. You know, so when we're growing up, uh, uh, they really didn't. They, they didn't really brought us. Brought, they didn't really bring us up in. Uh, you know, uh, in our language. As soon as I relocated, I went back home. I started in. Uh, when I was at. Uh, when I was going to school, I started learning that I can understand, but it's difficult for me to speak. You so understand? How do you it? Step? 
my brother, now one of the pass through your children. See, in Houston, now I did I know they miss my so I come meeting, you know, after my meeting. My after my meeting taco songs while driving and all that. I think I always now got be them. Uh, I like uh, what uh, Benji, those old Benji, this, yeah. those old things. because when we when we used to live in our child, my mom, mom, mom used to play Benji. Like, okay, okay, son. anyway, we, we now have younger artists now who churn out good songs, anyway, like they kind of uh, you know, uh, add the Afro beat and pop culture to the Isako, you know, flavor. Uh, maybe I'll send some of the links to you so you can get to listen to them. Mm. Mm. Send me yeah, I can I'll, I'll you another one now. Wait, one small picking sheet. I don't hear the other one. Yes, one small picking sheet. Now, my man, I the clean. <laughs> you got that one. So, um, a parting note to our people because data is very expensive here. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah, just let me know. You need any assistance? Let me know. All right. All right, sir. Thank okay. you very, very much. Nice talking to, to our buddy. people. So that. Yeah. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to our people. All right. And I really enjoyed the section. I enjoyed uh, this, the questions and all that. All right. Thank you, guys. Welcome. All right, and yeah, and that was um, our very own son of the soil living in Houston, Texas, in the USA. His name is um, <clears throat> Mahmoud Aminu Aibodi Bama. Yeah, he's a registered nurse in Houston, Texas, and um, I've been following up with him for some time now, so I decided to use him to reach out to our people. Nere uh, coronavirus and uh, that is how we've come to the end of today's uh, segment of the show. Uh, thank you for viewing. Thank you for your support. Thank you for you know granting me audience all through. so so. Uh, appreciations to all of you who viewed this piece please to help us reach a wider audience click on the share button you know you can do what host you can host watch parties so that we can begin to reach more people to sensitize them i appreciate you all that have been able to follow through with this program your organizer uh, some people are suggesting that we uh, change the name the nomenclature of this blog out blog sport to fmi blog sport uh, that is open for debate. You can begin to debate that. However, we'll continue our work and see how we can better improve our content for the better of uh, the generality of our female people. Oki Kila, Ayo, Ogomohanito, Yorado, Bigori Digia, Magbadana, Mieke, Itonimane, Yoma, Bigi Nikaya, Okila.